So this time we're going to get a little bit crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with my favorite dumb data set, which is countries.csv. Uh, so country, continent, GDP, life expectancy, and population. And we're going to make a big graphic out of this. Now the thing that's different about our last graph and this graph is a hundred things, but the biggest issue is that this actually uses an external data set. So it uses a CSV file instead of using just, if we look back at what we had last time, <clears throat> instead of like var cities equals blah, 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 we're just gonna somehow be reading in this CSV file. So we're gonna take this a step at a time. This is probably gonna take a few videos because it gets pretty complicated, but we'll be okay. So the first thing we want to do before we get crazy is look at our HTML that we have here. So uh, if we read right here, it says we have a div with the ID of chart, no SVG anywhere. So right here we see like, yes, we're, wasn't a lie. We do have a div with the ID of chart. When we were working before, we had an SVG already. Everything was great, everything was perfect. Um, but this time we don't. Now we could do something like SVG with equals blah, blah, blah. No, you're not allowed to do that. What we need to do is last time we used D3 to add rectangles for every single one of our data points. This time we actually have to start with even adding an SVG to the page. So here's what we're gonna do. If we go to 0, 3, oh no, we have to add our D3 library here and we have to add our other script here. So script src 0, 3 external data.js. And for our CDN version, of D3, I'm just going to copy and paste from that last file. All right, we're going to save, we're going to refresh, make sure there are no errors over here, everything's looking good. Now, we are going to spend the rest of our time, since we've added our D3 library and our own personal code to this page, everything else we want to do is going to be in 03 external data.js. So, what do we want to do? We want to say, hey, D3, we want you to grab this and stick an SVG inside of it. So previously, we did uh, d3.select. And we did d3.select SVG. <clears throat> In this case, we would do d3.select div. But the problem is there are a lot of divs on the page, right? Like div is a very common element. So it seems like we should probably be able to access it through ID equals chart. And it's true, we can. So we're saying, hey, D3, go grab the thing on the page with the ID of chart. And what we need to do now is we want to add an SVG element inside of it. If we look at the code that we had before, when we said, hey, SVG, find all your rectangles, bind the data, for all of the lonely, lonely data points, add a rectangle. We get to skip most of these steps here. We're just gonna stick with dot append. So dot append is going to add an SVG inside of chart. So D3, Go find the thing with the ID of chart, throw an SVG inside of it. We can save, we can refresh, and we see, hey, it works. It's looking pretty small though. Um, we have these two variables up here, width and height. So it might make sense to say, hey, we have this SVG, let's set its width and height attributes based on width and height. We're gonna do that the same way we did with the rectangles, the same way we did with the circles, with ATTR width. And we could say 800 here, but no, we're gonna use the variable width. And then we do dot ATTR height, and we set the height to be 
the variable height. We save, we refresh, and there we go. We have a nice big 800 by 800 SVG to work in. Now, in order to clean this up a little bit, we want to line everything up. And we also want to save this as a variable. So even though we do d3.select chart, the thing that is saved right here is actually this SVG. Because we say d3, go find the chart, then add an SVG, then go change the height, then go change the width. But this whole time, it's actually the element SVG that gets returned. And that's, it's just a pattern that you'll end up learning. Okay, so we now have our wonderful, beautiful uh, SVG. Now, we want to do what we did last time, where we want to say, hey, you know, find all the rectangles or find all the circles inside and attach the data to them. Problem is, we don't actually have our data yet, right? It's in this external file, this countries.csv file. In order to reach out to that file, we need to use D3 to read in that CSV. So to get D3 to read in the CSV, you use, easily enough, D3.csv. And we say D3, go read in the CSV called countries, CSV. So what happens if we, well, let's not save it yet. And then when you're ready, go run this function down here called ready. So we're saying D3, open up the CSV. Once you're done, call the function ready. Save, refresh, everything looks the same. Let's look at our console. All right, fetch API cannot load, blah, blah, blah. URL scheme must be HTTP or HTTPS for cores request. Now, what this means is when we are running something on our computer right here, it is grabbing this as a file on our machine. And due to security reasons, you don't want this file or this JavaScript to be able to poke around on the rest of our machine and maybe upload our like passwords.txt file to a secret server on the internet. So by default, unless you're using like an old version of Firefox, you cannot read in files just by opening up an HTML file. What you need to do is you need to run a server. You need to run a web server on your computer so that your browser is tricked into thinking that it's working on a website. The way we're gonna do that is, you're gonna make sure you're in the same folder as everything that you're working on. <clears throat> and then you do python-m http.server. Now you could actually run python-m http server uh, as soon as you open up a new window and then you'd be able to browse, but I like to do it from wherever we're doing our actual work. So I run that and it says serving HTTP on 0, 0, 0, 0, port 8000, which is HTTP 0, 0, 0, port 8000. So what we can do now is visit that URL and oh hey, we're just browsing all of our files again. So all we need to do is open up the file we're working on, which is 03 external data, the HTML file. And now we no longer get an error message. So this looks like the same one. <clears throat> I mean, it is the same file. This one is just being run on a server. This one is being run as a file. You will get this error all the time. I guarantee you times 1 million that you will get this error, you'll be confused, you'll be like, oh, fetch API, cannot load, what happened? And you're gonna come talk to me, you're gonna come talk to a TA, and our first question is gonna be, are you running a server? And their response is gonna be, no, I totally forgot to run a server, but it's fine, it happens to all of us. I believe last year in class, I said this was going to happen, and then maybe 30 seconds later, someone asked the question, so it's pretty great. 
pretty predictable. Okay, so we have now read in some external data. Um, we are now running on a server. Everything is perfect. Everything is good. We want to make sure that we got our data in though. So what is happening here? D3, reading in the CSV, and when it's ready, it's going to go call this function called ready. So I just called this function ready because I like to call it ready because when you're ready, you're ready to go. Um, and all of these data points should be what our data looks like. So I'm going to console.log data points save, refresh, and sure enough, there we go, all of our data has been read in. So all we had to do was, I mean, I guess this part isn't actually about reading in data, but we had to establish our SVG, uh, we had to read in our country CSV, and then we had to make sure that we were calling ready after that and running a server. So next up, what we're going to do is we are going to add a circle for every single one of these data points. So we have 188 different data points here. Let's add 188 circles to them. So we want to say D3. Look inside of this SVG and find all of the circles that you can. So in the same way that we did here with the rectangles, we could actually cut and paste a lot of this code, but we're gonna resist. I'm just gonna type it again, and then you can cut and paste in your future. So I'm gonna say D3. Take that SVG and find every single circle that is inside of it. How many are there? Zero, it's fine. Go out, grab those circles, and then bind the data. So attach one data point to every single one of our circles. And then for every single lonely, lonely, lonely data point, add a circle. You are going to be writing this code again and again and again and again and again and again and again. It's always SVG, select all data, enter append. Select all data, enter append. Select all data, enter append. You should go to sleep repeating that to yourself every night. That and function D in console.log. So I guess we got three things, but I think you'll be okay. So if we refresh here, we save, we refresh. If we inspect this SVG here, we open it up. We have a million circles inside. The number one issue you will have here, maybe you spell something wrong, maybe you do, you know, data, data, something else. If you type D3 dot select all circle. This happened in the, the last one too. There will be no circles inside of your SVG, but they will all be attached at the end of your HTML page. So just after your body tag closes, they're just going to be thrown down there. Now, if you want to be able to see these circles, they have to be inside of the SVG. So you have to make sure that first you create an SVG, and then finally you do SVG dot select all circle, data, data points, enter, append, circle. Great, so we now have all the circles in there. Next up, we're gonna get fancy uh, building a series of scales, and then we're gonna implement those scales to set where all of these should end up.